what is up YouTube uh, today I wanted to do another tutorial and this one's based more around sound design in a sense um, I'm basically gonna be getting you able to make this sound and so what I want to talk about with these sounds is um, as you can tell they're not it's not silent it's not nexus and uh, anything like that and so what inspired me to make this tutorial was I was out of town once and all I had was my hard drive and I really had an idea to make a track and uh, and I just needed a Mac to plug in my hard drive run Ableton and make something and put it down um, I found a Mac and I plugged in and the only thing I realized was you know I don't have any third-party plugins to get the sound the saw sound that I wanted so I thought, okay, what do I do? And I remembered I made a bank of samples of uh, saw notes. Um, I made every note in the in, in an octave because um, I use them for effects risers in my buildups. And what I did basically was I loaded up a drum machine, and I knew my chord progression. So I just put the notes that I needed into my drum machine and just played them over the sections that I needed, and. Um, and that's exactly how I got the chord progression uh, to sound that way was simply from using a sample of a saw. Um, you know, a lot of times there's criticism on using samples um, in in production just because, you know, people are afraid of a lack of originality or, or stealing other people's work. But in this case, um, it's simply a saw synth. And I thought, you know what, I had to improvise and be creative in how I can get the sound I want. And so I used a sample. And it's really effective and the one thing I do have to say about this the main reason I felt like I needed to share this was because it actually sounds a little bit better um, and I'm not sure exactly why but the one thing I will say is that through a little bit of processing it it gets the sound that you need and even though you know at the time that I was getting this done I didn't um, expect that I would be using it throughout the whole song or through the whole production you know I, I mean, I kept it, but of course, you know, once you get home into your studio and start putting it into your computer, then of course, then you can change the the sounds and everything like that. But if you're looking to put something together real quick, you know, there's always a way to improvise. Basically, what I did is I took, like I said, the notes of each um, of, of the chord progression that I had already um, that I made on a piano. So I knew the chord progression, I, so I knew what notes I needed to put into my drum machine and just play those when I needed to. Um... And, you know, after a little processing, a little reverb, some chorus, some sidechain compression, I got the result that I wanted. Um, one thing I do want to emphasize is that it is a little tricky um, when using this. I forget if it's a simpler or sampler, but when you're using this one, um, you know, adjusting the, uh, the sustain and stuff like that, it, it's a little weird for some reason. Um, I can't remember what it was. Yeah, here in the length, I had to adjust it a little bit. Um, because if you don't adjust the length, it'll play it all the way through. So there, there's a better way of doing it. I just I was doing it really quick, and I found out how to fix it. But um, this is just uh, something that I came across. So I would maybe use um, the opposite of whatever that was. I think it's no. So it's the sampler. Use the sampler instead of the simpler. Uh, maybe what you could do is get an instrument rack and create a lot of instances of the simpler and just do the hold function so that it just holds the note as long as you insert it to. Um, you know, I've used an array of all third-party plugins, you know, Absinthe, Massive, Nexus, FM8, um, you know, Razor, whatever it may be. And, uh, you know, of course, there's a little bit more flexibility to using those synths, but really you get a, a rich sound out of this. You know, after processing it, I really actually liked it, and that's why I kept it. Um, so I encourage you to play with samples. You know, don't be turned off by them just because it's sampling. Um, as I always tell the people I collaborate with or people that I work with, it's it's a matter of it sounding good, and if it does, you know, use it. Uh, there's no reason to do something a harder way just so that you can say you did it more difficult um, you know at the end of the day it's kinda like that old saying if it's not broken why fix it and uh, I probably wouldn't use this method really 
anytime after this uh, situation. But like I said, for those of you that don't have access to those third-party plugins or for whatever whatever reason you're in a pinch and just got to get something down, this is when it can come become useful. Um, I hope this helps. If you guys want to see um, or receive the sample pack that I made here the uh, of all those uh, saw notes, I guess um, what you can do is leave me a comment and just let me know if you guys want that and I can put up a link in the description afterwards to see if you guys want that or um, I might just put it up on my website zevenx.com z-e-v-e-n-x I have a music production um, or under the courses section you can actually um, just look under there and I'll probably just upload it to that uh, site and download it directly um, if you guys have any more suggestions to uh, things you want me to do tutorials on or or talk about let me know in the comments or tweet me at Zevenx Official. Um, follow all my uh, social media just because that way whenever I do upload a video you get that instant feed and you guys will be aware of what's next to learn. So talk to you guys next time.